Uh, Douglas Olsen joins me right now, the former Congressional Budget Office Director. Um, Doug, I guess the bigger issue here is uh, if you're not going to accept any responsibility uh, before the oil run-up, as the president had refused to do when more than half of it was prior to the first Russian boots getting anywhere near Ukraine, I, I guess I'm not surprised by this. But it sets a bad tone, especially when you're meeting with the oil guys or your energy secretary is, to alleviate this, right? Yeah, I, I think that they've really got themselves in a terrible position here. That their, their strategy of, you know, saying they don't want any more oil and then begging people to drill uh, overseas but not in the United States and, and now blaming the industry for not drilling more in the United States and refining more in the United States when the reality is from day one they have sent the message that they think the oil industry in the United States should be extinct. And that means that if you're a refiner, there's no reason to maintain or expand a refinery. And we haven't built a new one in, in, in 50 years, so that, that notion doesn't make any sense. And so they, they've sent them a very strong signal to the oil and gas sector that, that they want them to go away. And now they're begging them to do a U-turn when they've made the economics of doing a U-turn really unfavorable. So this is a, a problem of their own creation, and now they're trying to turn it into a political strategy of finger pointing and and, and changing the subject to, to oil companies instead of the inflation problem they have. Yeah, I just look at the raw numbers and try not to play the politics with it here. But to your point, I mean, there are fewer lands available for drilling now than there were on the prior administration. It's just a fact. It is what it is. They can argue it till the cows come home, but it is what it is. Having said that, though, where are we going on this inflation front. Some are interpreting the biggest saving grace, ironically, could be the slowdown in the economy that these interest rate hikes are causing and the rising gas prices that uh, for the, all the wrong reasons, prices will come down, but we'll have a serious slowdown, maybe worse because of it. What do you think? Well, first, the, the energy products are only about 8 percent of the consumer price index. So uh, pointing at, at gasoline saying that's the problem if we just got the oil companies to fix that we wouldn't have inflation is just n doesn't add up like look at the numbers as you say uh, the real issues are that things like uh, housing right shelter one third of the CPI uh, has an inflation rate that started very near one and at the beginning of the president's term is now at 5.5 percent and has risen every month it shows no signs of abating that's the core problem how do you deal with that well, a, a time-tested uh, way for the Federal Reserve to slow the economy is raise interest rates so that people don't want a mortgage. And if they don't want a mortgage, that means they don't want the house. And if they don't want the house, then there's no point in building the house. And then you don't put the furnace in the house and you don't pave the driveway and you don't put the refrigerator in. And the whole swath of the economy slows down as a result of the Fed's actions. That's what they are trying to do. The good news is it will work to slow inflation. It broadly hit the economy. The bad news is Every month, you get a series of reports from the Labor Department or retail sales or, or the housing market that are worse than the month before, and people don't like to hear that either. But once you put the Fed in this position, they have no good choices. It's either live with the inflation, no thanks, or deal with slowing the economy and run the risk they slow it to the point of going negative. That's where we are. You know, that is very well explained, Doug, the, 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 the domino effect. You see from one price going up and the chilling spillover right. and others. That very, very well done. Um, I protect my job zealously, Doug. Don't get any ideas. So uh, <laughs> well explained, my friend. Uh, Douglas Altik, the uh, former CBO director, an uncanny read of just the reality of rising prices and that spillover effect.